be mindful of what he said. He's sending you into the world. Go and preach the gospel. Just give him glory. The Lord who has been to fight for life. The Lord who has been with you.
this word so that they can return to the worship of the true God the reason why God has created every man every mankind is to know him and to worship him but because of what Ahab had done in the land he had turned the heart of the people away from God and he has introduced them to Baal even the temple of God has become the place where they are worshipping Baal. And we know the consequence that if the Lord will return and meet these people <clears throat> worshipping false gods, no matter the number of them, is going to destroy them. And as a way of God to rescue the perishing, he appointed Elijah. He appointed us. He poured his grace upon Elijah and Elijah was able to make it to the Jezreel even before Ahab. We also saw the last month that enemy had paid a huge sum amount of money. A huge sum amount of money had been paid by the enemy purposely to annihilate, to destroy and to kill every member of the church because the enemy knows that the church is God's method the church is God's strategy for rescuing the world and because of that now he's ready to sponsor a lot of hassles and destruction as a way to cripple and to frustrate the purpose of God and we saw what Mordecai did. Mordecai responded immediately. And they were able to truncate the purpose of God, I mean the purpose of Satan in their own time. So today we we'll begin to look at the strategies. The strategies for our divine acceleration. The word strategy is actually a military term. And what it means is an elaborate and systematic plan of action in fighting battle. Very elaborate and systematic plan of action in fighting battle. For any army to win a battle, they know that they, mu they must adopt and execute the best strategy in combating their foes. And they know that they must not always, they must not all stay in one place. They, are, they must not go the same direction. And they must not do the same thing at the same time. There is a need for them to defy themselves and set ambushes against the enemy in different places. So today, we see God showing us one of the strategies that we can use in achieving the mandate that God has given us. The mandate that God has given us is to make disciples of all the nations of the world. Very elaborate task. In fact, it looks so impossible that a small assembly like us will present Christ to the whole world. That is why God is exposing us to his strategies. Something happened in the passage we read this morning which is very, very similar to what is happening in our own days. What happened was there was an outbreak of the wrath of God against his own people. 
At this time, God was not fighting his enemy. It was his own people that God is sponsoring the enemy to destroy. You know, that looks so contradictory. But, like one of the adages in Yoruba will say that the same teeth that a dog uses to play with her children, he can use the same teeth to bite. Now, it is God himself that is sponsoring destruction against the church. We'll see the reason. But let's start from what Moses and Aaron, what they did in order to pacify the anger of God. Then we'll look at how they did it. We'll now look at why they did what they did and the result they got from doing what they did. Maybe that will be very clear to us to understand what the Lord is calling us also to do and to follow suit. What did they do? In verse 46, said Moses said to Aaron, Don't forget there was an outbreak of the wrath of God, which is now leading to the, the destruction of many members of the church. The Moses and Aaron. Maybe we'll start from verse 43. They came before the tabernacle of meeting. Maybe they wanted to be praying. We bind the devil. We bind the devil. All the enemies. Say, God. You know, is, do you see the reaction of God? Say, get away from my presence. Is God kicking against intercession? Is God opposing prayer? Is God opposing sacrifices? Is God opposing singing of praises? No. But there is a specific response for every specific situation. Don't forget, we said the time in which we are is a time of spiritual emergency. The enemy had paid a huge sum amount of money and he has set a particular day in a month and in a year to kill, to annihilate, and to destroy every member of the church. All the women, all the men, including the children, so that there will be no future for the church. So that the purpose of God for saving the world will be truncated. Huge some amount of money. And that was the time Moses and Aaron, they wanted to do as they normally do. Routine worship. And God said, Get away from me! Can't you see? Don't you see what is happening? Get away from me! And I saw God doing the same thing in the days of Amos. In Amos chapter number 5, when people were going to get imported incense to come and worship God, said, take away from my presence. God was now referring to the worship that people have offered him in the past and he has accepted. 
said, take away your noise. This is a time of spiritual emergency. So what is God expecting? He expects us to act very, very urgently and respond to the situation as it is presenting itself. Thank God for Moses. Very close to the heart of God. He said to Aaron, Take a censer and put fire in it from the altar. And put incense on it. And take it quickly to the congregation and make atonement for them. Five things they did. Take the censer. What is the censer? The censer is a consecrated container for burning incense. Please mark my word. A consecrated container. Not just a container. Not just an ordinary container. In the time of spiritual emergency, if you take just a container, if you take just an ordinary container, it will not get, give us the results we are looking for. And you remember, Ahab, he made priests from all the class of people. As the church is doing today, once you are able to recite few memory verses, whether you know the context where they were used in the scripture or not, you will be ordained a pastor. But here you say, it has to be a censer, a consecrated container. Consecrated container. Not a conformist. But a transformed life. You know the other day when God was confronting me with a very critical issue about worship. And he said, do you know what? It is only the living that can worship me. And I said, that I know now. He said, what do you know? He said, it is only those who are alive. He said, what is the definition of your own being alive? He said, to be hell and hearty. He said, no. Those who are alive in Jesus. Those who are dead to sin. Those who are dead to the, to the flesh. The flesh has no control over them again. Those who are dead to the world. The world has no influence on them again. So those are the ones that can worship me. Those are the consecrated containers. Consecrated containers. Those who have experienced victory over sin, over the works of the flesh. Consecrated containers. Those are the ones where incense can be burnt and God will smell the aroma 
and he will relent from his anger. The second thing they, they did, he said, put fire in it. But look at the scripture. Not just any fire also. There is a particular place where the fire must be taken. Actually, in the tabernacle. The tabernacle is divided into three places. We have the outer court. Then the inner court, which is the holy court. You now have the holy of holies, which only the priest could enter but once in a year. The holy court is only the consecrated people. People that are ceremonially clean that could enter. But the other one is for all and sundry. So in the holy court, the holy court is covered. The illumination at the holy court does not come from the sunlight. There is a golden lampstand that provides illumination. And the, 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 the candle on those lamps must continue to burn 24-7. The, the, light, the light must never go off. Then, at the other side is the altar. The altar of incense. Where the priest used to make atonement. Where the priest would stand making intercession for the people. Burning incense. The fire on that altar also must never go off. And that is why some people in the priesthood were given the responsibility of maintaining that fire. That is all they must do. They have no other assignment. Then you recollect that on the day the first tabernacle was to be consecrated, was to be dedicated, the fire on that altar of incense came from heaven. It was not prepared by any human hand. God now told Moses, said, tell Aaron that that fire must never go down. Because it is only the fire that comes from, that is taken from that altar that anybody could present before me. Any other fire is null and void. Do you remember Nadab and Abi? Why they died? They offered a profane fire. So he said, take the censer. Put fire in it from the altar. You remember, even before Isaiah would be qualified to go and preach, what happened? There was a fire that came from the altar in heaven that what cleansed his mouth. If the fire from the altar, from the altar, has not touched your mouth, no matter how melodious your song may be, it can only excite people. It cannot change their lives. No matter how eloquent your sermon may, I mean, how eloquent you may sound while preaching. And that is why you see all the things we have today, rubbish. Your attitude, your attitude will determine your attitude, your all those are what? High sounding words. Come on, come on, catch it, catch it. Whatsoever you confess, you possess. No. Fire from the altar. Fire from the altar. And I began to look in the scripture. What are the things that the fire symbolizes? Remember God said 
himself is what? Consuming fire. And the Holy Ghost, you know, they will never tell you that the Holy Ghost also, another symbol of Holy Ghost is fire. That when we want to consecrate you and lay hands on you, we must pour fire on you. It is only oil. There are times the Holy Ghost manifests in fire. When we look at Jeremiah number 5 and verse 14, we see another thing that the fire symbolizes. So that you know and understand this strategy very well. Jeremiah 5 and verse 14. Jeremiah 5 said, Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, because ye speak this word, behold, I will make my words in thy mouth fire. I will make my words. Whose word? God's word. Any word that is not given to you by God does not carry fire. If you go to the internet to go and download, it can only add to the head knowledge of people. It cannot change them. If you go to the internet to go and download songs, we are not saying we cannot get some from there. But if it is not coming from God, it will not be fire. And if it, it is not fire, it is impotent. Impotent. Say, put fire in it. There is a container. And this is the container that has been consecrated to God. And every day I say, Lord, I rededicate my life to you. Because I know that except I am consecrated to God, I am useless in the scheme of his purpose. But then, there must be fire from the altar. Can we look at another scripture? Jeremiah 20 and verse 9. Jeremiah 20 and 29. Jeremiah 20, 29. No, verse 9, sorry, verse 9. 29. 29. Jeremiah 20, verse 9. You know, here was a man of God. Terrifically anointed. You know, he said he was a youth. He could not speak. And God said, don't worry. I will load you with my word. And this man began to speak. But as he spoke, people were just making jests of him. So he became discouraged. Maybe you are already discouraged too. We have been preaching. People are not listening. So he said, I will not make mention of you anymore. Nor speak anymore in your name. He said, I cannot keep quiet. His words, they are like what? Burning fire in my bones. You see, many at times I have been also discouraged to come and stand there and come and preach to you. But I can help it. It burns inside. There are many times I also want to join the motivational. Because I want to see you jumping up and laughing. But I can't help it. It is like fire. Shut up. The reason why when they say let's go and you don't go is because there is no fire inside and I'm begging God this morning to pour the fire inside of you. It is the fire that elicits the passion, the zeal, even when it is not convenient for the body. 
Even when the environment is not friendly. Even when the atmosphere is not cooperating. The fire will keep pushing you. The fire will keep pushing you. See, I watched on, I watched on Thursday. And some of our people were going for the barrier. Honestly, I salute the courage, the sacrifice, the commitment. The number of people that came were more than the bus can carry. So they were looking for how to get more space in the bus. And they went to look, carry chairs to put inside the bus. And those people sat from here to Ndo. And they felt no pain because there was love. I wish that that zeal will also be for fulfilling this mandate. You know when there is fire in you, no complaint. You don't feel the inconvenience even though you have been inconvenient, but you don't feel it because there is fire. You say, ah, how do you sit down from here to Burkina and you sit down two days? But there is fire. And except, we accept we all have this fire shut up in our bones. The whole world will not know Jesus. Take the fire from the altar, put in the container. Except fire is released into the container. You know the container will remain ordinary. And for ordinary purpose. You know many of us, you know the extent at which you go. For your business to keep moving, there is fire to make money. So also, to make disciples, there is fire you must collect at the altar. That same Jeremiah 23 of verse 29. Jeremiah 23 and 29. Fire. Put fire in it. Is not my word like a fire, says the Lord. Is not my word like a fire, says the Lord. Is is word. Once you catch the word, once you allow God to fill your mouth with his word, even where you are selling, you will be selling your business and you will see souls getting converted. I know a man one of our deacons at Rutameva in those days he used to lecture in UI in the department of agronomy. So they went to the laboratory one day. They were doing soil tests. And at the point when the, the soil, different kinds of soil they brought, they were being eaten up. Then everybody in that laboratory, they began to feel the heat extremely hot and they began to complain they began to shout to the level oh god please release us this is hot and god said release my fire said hell will be hotter than this and that is where everyone who has not given his life to jesus we go and they will be there eternally 
there is no particular day they will get out of that place. That day, several of the students gave their life to Jesus. So if you carry this fire, there is nowhere you cannot release it. Put the fire in it. For the space of time, let's limit it to that one. The third thing. And put incense in it. Incense. Put incense in it. So that the fire could burn it. You see, you see, okay, what is incense? Can we look at Revelation 5 8? Revelation 5 8. Revelation 5 8. Revelation, not numbers. Revelation 5 8. These media people, they are confused. They want to confuse me. Revelation 5 8. God bless you. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb. Having every one of them halves and golden wares full of odors, which are the prayer of saints. Another version will say, full of what? Incense. So, the prayer of saints is referred to as what? Incense. Prayer. And that is why in James, James number 5.16 will say, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. That is the prayer that is being offered out of a consecrated censer with fire from the altar of God in it. Are, are you seeing not just noise? See, many people pray, but their prayer has no bearing with the fire. Their, their incense and the fire are not compatible. So the fire could not burn it. Because it is when the fire and the incense met together that the fire will burn the incense. There is something the incense will produce. Hold on. Aroma. Sweet smelling aroma. So whatever that comes out of a sensor that is not consecrated, altar that has no fire from the altar in it, that smell will be obnoxious to God. It will not be a sweet smelling. Actually, in order for God to rescue this world, is looking for something in his containers. And the thing that he's looking for is aroma. Sweet smelling aroma. When he got that aroma from Noah, you remember in Genesis, what happened? He made a new covenant. He said, never again will I destroy the world. As if he was, he was not the one that did it before. When he smelled the sacrifice, he said, never again will I. How many people offer sacrifice? Just one man. Just one man. So we are too many to save the world. 
your group, the members of your group, you are too many to deliver Okunraye. But you need to have fire. Your censor must be consecrated. And you must have fire from the altar with incense to produce a sweet smelling. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 3. You will, I, we, we need to put context into what I've just said. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. I've given you the example of Noah. Let's hear again about the example of a man and his team who spread the knowledge of Jesus all over the then known world and see the strategy. 2 Corinthians number 3 from verse 14. From verse 14. Now, thanks be to God. Sorry, chapter 2. Chapter 2. Now, thanks be to God who always lead us in triumph in Christ and through us does what? Diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in what? In every place. As they go like this, they were just carrying the censer. They carried the censer. And as they carried the censers, what was one of them? Sweet smelling. Eh? From their lives. From their lives. From their lives. And people are getting saved. You know, he was a tent maker. He carried that censer to do his tent making. Luke was a doctor, a medical practitioner. Peter and his companion, they were fishermen. What made them to be different was that their containers have been consecrated. They have added fire from the altar. They pour incense in it. That was why they were able to turn the whole world upside down. They were not carrying the briefcase for the politicians. They were not errand boys for political parties. They were not begging their favor to send them to the Holy Land. Even when they go to look for contract, they know that the work they are doing is just a means to diffuse everything everywhere. This, they were not ready to change figure. They were not ready to compromise. Whatever that would tarnish this container, that would render it useless before God, they were not ready to put their hands into it. And that was why their message was able to change the world. Because their message and their lives, they match each other. The fourth thing they did. Don't forget, say, take a censer, put fire in it, put incense in it. And what, what, what is the next thing? And take it quickly. Do you see acceleration there? Take it quickly. What is the meaning of quickly? Without further delay. Enough of committee meetings. Enough of uh, planning, planning, planning. If we don't go, one thing about mission is this. If you don't go, you will not get the provision. Say so these signs we follow. It will go ahead of you. It is designed to follow after you. Said, so take it quickly. If you don't go quickly to Okunaye, you will not know that six people could give their life to Jesus in a day. We don't know anything. You don't need to know anything. 
Just have a consecrated container. Put fire in it. Put incense in it and go quickly and see whether the cripple will not rise. You see, we have seen a lot of things that God has done. And God said, all those are just for taste of what I can do through you. Go quickly. You see, the method of God has always remained the same. He said, go, make disciples. Don't stay. Me, I don't want to, I can't go. The, except they change the bus they give us. Say you have bus in your own day. Thomas Jefferson Bowen, he had no boss. He left America in 1848 and he landed in Badagri in 1850. Two years. The journey that you make in 16 hours now, he made it in two years. After he had walked and walked and he's tired, some men will carry him on their shoulders. And see what he did. He was able to saturate the entire southwest with a message and he planted Baptist churches. And see what, that, what God used that single man to do. So in all the states of the Federation of Nigeria today, we have Baptists. Kudos to Thomas Jefferson Bowen. Heaven is waiting on you. What we will say about you. We are reading about Bowen. We are reading about other men that came with a message through the Methodist, through the Anglican. What would they say about you? You'll be like Methuselah. He lived now in 69 years and he died. Because he taught the old lessons of life. You know, when I was looking those chronological, they were so particular about their age. That means every year they celebrate bad day. I mean, for you to remember your age, you must be what? Doing it every day. It, it, there's nothing wrong in doing it. But while you are doing that, don't forget that there is a knowledge. There is a knowledge that the word, the word is waiting for to come out of you. If that knowledge is not being spread, if that aroma is not being released, you are a worthless servant. And you have your place in the outer darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. That business is not given to you to make money alone. You are there in that business to make disciples. And the fifth thing they did, he said, make atonement for the people. Make atonement for the people. See to it that they are justified by faith. It is only those who have been justified by faith that we have peace with God. No matter how rich they are. No matter how successful they are in their business, in their chosen career. I don't care how much they make when they play a match and they win Champions League. It doesn't matter the number of people that are watching them all over the world. If they have not been justified by faith, they will go to hell. Make atonement. Take them to the cross. The place where Jesus died. Quickly do it. They did it. And how did they do it again? They have to forgo the routine style of worship. Yes, it was God that instituted the tabernacle worship. And the way he instituted it is that the altar is stationary. 
But now in the time of emergency, this pulpit must be taken into every place. Don't forget the enemy has circulated the, 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 the information through Korea. We have to go to schools. We have to go to the marketplaces. We have to go into homes, entering homes, entering quickly into homes before the accuser, before the agent of destruction we arrive there before us. And you know, we have received the anointing. No matter how, how fast Ahab run, it cannot outrun us. Go quickly. Go quickly. Except we get there, the plague will not stop. The only thing is that they can change their strategy from using atomic bomb. You know, remember in the south, in the south, south they were also burning, burning, but what happened later? They changed to kidnapping. Well, Lord, Boko Haram, if Boko Haram keep quiet today, he already has numerous armies he had recruited with different strategies. Go quickly. They went. What happened? The plague stopped. Except we go. The plague will not stop. Immorality will continue to dominate our campuses. Our guests. Our boys. They will continue to be initiated into secret court. They will continue to lose their virginity. Except we go. It is by going we can rescue them. Do you understand what God has spoken to us this morning? Do you get the point? You know, I made sure that I didn't shout. I do know that occasionally I did that for you to understand. Do you understand? Jesus said, Now that you know these things, blessed are you if you do 